Hi guys, welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name is Rini and I love sharing DIY home decor projects here on my channel. Today I'm going to share with you some techniques by which I spruced up some plain photo frames and the second project is a mirror that I made using some embroidery hoops. Before you get started, please subscribe if you haven't already and click the bell icon to get notified every time I post a new video on my channel. So without further ado, let's hop right into the DIYs. We are going to use these two photo frames for our first DIY project. We are also going to need the silicone molds. Next I'm grabbing my air dry clay and then I'm going to take a piece and press it into this baroque silicone mold. Since the design is intricate and the mold is very small, I took a generous amount of clay and cut out the extra with my X-Acto knife. I'm placing this on the top part of the frame, you can arrange them whichever way you like. So I'm going to repeat this shape one more time. Now I'm going to rotate it and place it on the opposite side. I'm taking two pieces of clay and filling up these molds which have a different design and I'm carefully cutting through the clay to ensure it doesn't break. I'm going to place two of these pieces on each corner and then smoothing the edges with a brush dipped in water. So you don't have to place the pieces on the frame, I'm just placing them for our reference. I'm figuring out how I want the arrangement to be. So this is just an optional step which you can skip. I'm arranging the pieces like so and we are going to let them dry. Next I'm grabbing the smaller photo frame and this floral mold. I thought of using this two daisy molds for this photo frame. So I'm taking a small piece of clay and pressing it into the mold and I'm kind of pushing the clay towards the edges of the mold. And then I'm carefully removing it out of the mold. If you notice any extra clay, you can remove it with a knife. I'm arranging the flowers in such a way that if I'm placing a large flower, then I'm putting a small flower next to it. And we are trying to keep an equal space between each of them. After letting them dry for a day, we are going to remove the pieces and clean the frames with a damp towel. I'm going to attach the pieces to the frame with E6000 and I'm using a toothpick to apply the glue with precision. Also, I decided to change the previous orientation a bit so I'm attaching two pieces opposite to each other. Once all the pieces are glued down, we are going to allow it to dry for a few hours. Next, we are grabbing the smaller photo frame and removing the backing. Then we are going to paint it, so I am mixing this white chalk paint with beige and to add a little more warmth, I am adding this terracotta color to it. I went for two coats and I covered the paint with a plastic to prevent it from drying. Before applying the second coat, we want to make sure the first coat dried well. Then I took the daisies and colored all of them with a white acrylic paint. For painting the center of the daisies, I used a mustard yellow paint. I am using a small brush to apply the paint. Then I'm attaching the flowers to the frame with super glue. So we are following the same arrangement which is one small daisy between two big daisies. I'm using this polyurethane varnish to protect the paint and to give it a satin finish. Now I'm grabbing the other photo frame and before I start painting, I'm dividing the frame into two sections using this masking tape. And I'm also making sure it is on the same level on both the sides. And then I'm painting the top section with my white chalk paint. To add a bit of warmth to the stark white paint, I'm mixing a tiny amount of beige and I went for 2 to 3 coats of paint in total. After the paint dried down, I'm removing the tapes. Now I'm using this gold acrylic color to paint the bottom section of the frame. I was not quite liking the finish it was giving so I went for this metallic gold color and I applied two more coats. 
After the gold paint dried up, I watered down some brown acrylic paint and applied a thin layer of it. This gave a beautiful antique finish to the gold paint. I have cut two watercolor papers to fit the frames because we're going to make botanical watercolor art for the photo frames. To start off, I'm just roughly sketching the outline of a snake plant. Then I'm mixing lemon yellow watercolor with a tinge of green and painting the edges of the leaves. To paint the leaves, I'm mixing two greens and filling in the rest of the space. I mixed a slight amount of black to the green and darkening the areas where the shadows would form. I am outlining the leaves with the same color. If we notice, snake plants have a pattern on their leaves. So I am drawing rows of very short vertical lines close to each other and I am repeating this pattern for all the leaves. And I used a green watercolor mixed with black to draw the lines. I grabbed the other piece of paper and I'm starting to sketch a flower pot. And then I'm making the sketch of a cactus. To color the cactus, I mixed some emerald green with a tiny amount of black. For the next two sections, I'm mixing more water to the paint to make it lighter. And for the last section, I'm applying a darker green. Now I'm painting the flower pot black. Next step will be adding the shadows to give it more dimension. For drawing the thorns, I'm using a black micro tip pen. And this finishes off our watercolor cactus art. I'm so impressed how these photo frames are looking. This is such an easy and fun technique to jazz up any plain photo frame and give them an entirely different look. I think they're looking unique and aesthetic and I'm so happy how they turned out. For our next DIY project, I'm using this large embroidery hoop and this is a 14 inch hoop. I'm also using this 6 inch embroidery hoop. To start off, I'm going to remove the outer hoops for both the pieces and we will be working with only the inner hoops. I'm using my ruler to make sure the smaller hoop shares the same center with the larger hoop so we get to concentric circles. And once we achieve that, I'm marking those by tracing both the circles. This is because in case the hoops move while working, we will know where they were initially placed. Next, I'm grabbing this coffee sticks to make the framework for our mirror. I'm placing the coffee sticks on the hoops and making the markings where we are going to cut them. Then I'm cutting them to size with a pair of scissors. I'm using my super glue to attach it. I'm applying only a tiny amount of glue on both the ends. Then I'm going to press it down for 10 to 15 seconds until the glue dries out. In the same way, I will be repeating the step on the other side of the framework. I'm going to attach two more sticks on the other two sides for support. After all the four sticks are attached to the hoops, I'm flipping it over and I'm going to attach four more sticks in the same way. We're going to do this to give the mirror framework some extra support. Once all the sticks are glued down, we're going to let the super glue fully cure for 24 hours before moving on to the next step. Next, I'm using this pack of jute twine and I'm going to start off by attaching to the coffee stick with hot glue. Then I'm going to start wrapping the twine around the framework. I'm not wrapping it very tight, we are just going to make sure it's firm enough. Also, I'm trying to wrap the twine close to each other to avoid any gaps.
from here this is repetitive i am trying to equally distribute the loops throughout the framework and do not worry if the loops are overlapping a bit we can fix them in the end I used up the first pack of twine, now I am attaching the end to the outer hoop with hot glue and then cutting off the extra twine. Then I am grabbing another spool of twine and I am starting to wrap it again around the framework. Once I'm done wrapping the framework with twine, I'm flipping it over and gluing the end to the back of the hoop. As we can see some bumps are formed here, we can fix them by adjusting the loops a bit. Next I'm grabbing this very inexpensive round mirror from dollar store. And then I'm going to detach the mirror from the frame. I'm going to apply a generous amount of hot glue around the inner hoop and then attach the mirror to the frame. We're going to hold it in place till the glue cools down. To give the mirror extra support, I'm applying a layer of hot glue around the edges. Now to hang it up, I'm cutting out a piece of jute rope and attaching it to the back of the mirror with a ton of hot glue. This is how our boho jute mirror turned out. This will be such a unique statement piece for your home's entryway. I think it turned out better than I envisioned and I couldn't be more happy about it. Like the DIYs today and if you did please let me know in the comment section below which one was your favorite my personal favorite is the mirror I think it turned out so pretty you can also follow me on Instagram at dusty hills thank you so much for watching and I'll be seeing you guys next time